Right, so I'm quite happy with the way this looks. I'm going to add an IK constraint now. And I can find that down here in the bone constraints properties. Now important note, you must be on pose mode to see the bone constraints properties. If you're in edit mode or object mode, it simply won't be there. So I'll go down into pose mode. And here's the next important note. Select the bone that you want to add the IK constraint to. Now if you add it to this bone, then the IK constraint will bend here on the top joint. If you add it to this bone, then the IK constraint will bend here on this joint. So you want your knee to bend, so click on this joint here, which we would probably call the shin. Shin. And I'll just call this one the thigh. And then of course we'll call this one the foot. And I'll call this one the hip. Now sometimes I go with skeletal names instead. You know, like femur and uh, tibia and, and tarsals. But um, for the sake of this tutorial, let's just stick to friendly names. So now that that's been done, I'm going to come over here to the bone constraints properties. And under there, I'm going to click add bone constraint. Now, what I'm looking for is inverse kinematics, which is under tracking. I'll give that a click and you'll see immediately that an IK string has come through this and is connecting from here to the hip. Great, so let's move this around first of all and see what happens. Right, so not too dissimilar to the kind of results we're getting from the auto IK. Let's tell Blender exactly how we want this to move and how we want this to work. So first of all, I'll just pull this out a bit so we can see better. Nudge it up there. So first of all, Blender wants to know what the target is for this bone constraint. You'd think it would already have guessed considering that we are in the pose mode of a particular armature, but it seems to need to be fed that information. So you can either select armature 2 from in here, which is the name of the skeleton that you can see up here, or you can just use your dropper to click on armature 2. Now that armature 2 has been selected, it would like to know which bone is going to be the controlling bone or the controlling object. So which bone would you like to click on to move this IK string around? And the answer to that for me is the foot. I'd like to click on the foot and move the foot around with G so that when that foot moves up, the whole knee bends. So I'll click on the shin and I'll go to bone and I'm going to click on foot. There we go. Right, let me grab this foot and try it out. Nothing's happening. I can't move. It's, it's rooted to the ground. What if I grab the shin? I can kind of move, but not very well. So let's just address why this is happening. The first thing to take into account is that your foot really cannot move independently of the shin. And the reason for that is because the foot is parented under the shin. We've told Blender that this foot is connected to this shin. So let's go back into edit mode, click on this foot, press Alt and P, and just say to it, clear the parent. And now that's clear, this foot is free to move wherever it likes. So let's go back into pose mode now and click on it, press G, and hey presto. Now the foot is moving around and it is controlling the IK chain the way I'd wanted it to. So let's just have a look at that now and see how that is from the front. So you can see I'm getting a bend in my knee, sort of, and I'm getting a lot of bend up here on my hip. Now you might notice that the bend between the hip and the thigh is, you know, greater. It seems more extreme than the bend on the knee. That's because this angle here isn't as severe as the angle here. So the IK chain is bending more there than it is down there. But there's a way to work around all of this. If we click on this shin again and have a look at the controls, we can see it's got chain length here. Now chain length is asking you how far up the chain this IK is acting. So let's just turn this onto one. Because it's on zero, it's factoring in all of the bones. Let's turn it onto one bone, one bone, and click on this again. Look at that. The hip's not moving at all now because it's only going up one bone. So it's only going up to there. Let's just look at this from the side. Yeah, so it's bending the knee, but it's having no effect on the femur, and it's having no effect on the hip. Now let's click on this and add two, two. And I'll click on this foot and bend it again. Now look at that. The knee is bending, but the femur is also bending. So what's happening there is I've clicked two, so it's coming up there, which is one, and then it's going up to there, which is two. Lastly, I'll put number three on, number three, 
and it'll go, did you see the string there? It jumped from this joint here, the top of the thigh, to this joint here, the top of the hip. And one last time, if I give that a click and move it, you'll see that we're back to where we were at the start now. We're affecting three joints instead of two or one, or when you type in zero, all of them. So that is how that works.